So recall we were left with this Euler equation after maximizing the agent's lifetime utility subject to his budget constraint. Now this Euler equation holds for any state, so um, we wish to sum across all states of the world for uh, some t. So we sum both sides and we realize that actually um, this term right here and uh, this term right here beta do not uh, depend on s so we can actually take them out of the sum and that is what we do here and remember we had actually defined um, the expected utility that a consumer would get uh, at t plus one as the sum of the uh, utilities uh, the marginal sorry the marginal utilities in different states multiply by the probability that that actual state is realized which is pi of s so the, these two expressions for the expected utility are equivalent and finally recall from our no arbitrage condition that uh, this is just equal to one from the fact that the price of the bond uh, has to be equal to the price of all of the uh, Arrow de Bru securities. So now we're left with this uh, um, familiar expression for the Euler equation that relates the marginal utility today and the expected marginal utility in the future along an optimal path. But let's take a step back and look at two different states of the world, which we call uh, J and K. And uh, we divide the two Euler equations uh, for these two states, one divided by the other, and we realize that uh, um, since the return is the same for the risk-free asset and uh, um, this hasn't changed, and the utility, the marginal utility, is also the same because this is period t and not a period t plus one. We're left with an expression that is uh, uh, for the uh, ratio of two prices of the prices across states, which is the relative price, that is just equal to the ratios of the uh, probabilities of those states times the ratio of the util marginal utilities of consumption of those two states. And these will hold across states. And will be the same for any uh, agent I. Now imagine that we make the assumption that the price of an arrow debris security is uh, for, for, for a state S, it is the same as the probability that this state S occurs. If this holds, that is, if the prices of these arrow de Bruce securities are actuarial fair, then this and that are the same, and this and that are the same, so we can cancel them out. And we're left with the uh, fact that, uh, given this assumption, uh, the ratio of the marginal utilities at t plus 1 across states is just equal to 1. Meaning, uh, these two marginal utilities for two different states are the same given that prices are actuarial fair. And also, since uh, the two marginal utilities are the same, then it has to be the case that uh, um, the consumption levels are the same if uh, uh, the price of the of the Arrow de Bruce security is equal to the probability that the specific state happens. Finally, assuming complete markets also uh, tells us that there will be no consumption reversals. That means that, take for example, agent A and agent, agent B. If agent A has more consumption than uh, agent B uh, at some period T, then he will always have more consumption level uh, levels than agent B. Why is that? Well, recall the uh, first order condition when we solve for lambda, the shadow value 
of an agent's uh, intertemporal wealth. If we divide uh, one by, if we divide the one for agent A by the one for uh, agent B, then we're able to cancel this out because they're the same. And this tells us that um, the ratio between uh, the marginal utilities of two agents has to be constant over time. So if for one period agent uh, 1, agent A, has uh, more consumption than agent uh, B, meaning uh, his marginal utility is lower than the marginal utility of agent B, then this ratio will be uh, less than 1, and this will hold for uh, for all t, and also for any state of the world. And that's it. Assuming complete markets, the ratio between the, the marginal utilities of two different consumers has to stay constant over time, and uh, that means that we cannot see consumption reversals in these kind of models.